So things are getting spicy. Things are heating up with the reprint of Hero Quest. We've got like, we're only like a few days in and it's already been funded. It's doing it through the HasLab, kind of Hasbro's in-house Kickstarter. I mean, they, they want to keep all the cash. They don't want to give that 10% cut. Um, we do know that it's essentially a one-to-one reprint. So the rules are going to be the same. I'm expecting the missions are the same. The models are being updated. The artwork seems about 50-50, a refresh, but still holding on to kind of that, that classic design. And we've got a couple of minor Kickstarter, Kickstarter, HasLab starter extras, maybe, because I mean, the, the campaign is 45 days out. I mean, this is going on till November, so it's going to generate momentum. It's going to kind of move forward. Will there be other stretch goals or if they see it losing momentum, uh, will they conjure some up and, and move more? But it's amazing how much this, this re-release, I mean, this is something that I have the original, I have Keller's Keep, I've played it, I enjoy it, I love it for what it is. One could say I don't need a refresh or reprint, but I, I would love to have kind of a new copy to play. I've played my other copy to death and, and to have that refreshed, um, reinvigorated pushing out. Uh, forever, the community has been like, we, we'd love a reprint. I mean, when it was announced, the Hero Quest 25th anniversary edition, that like the internet stopped for a second. The internet paused for a moment when it was kind of hinted that Restoration Games was going to do a, a return to Hero Quest. Like the internet stopped for a second. So the the fan base, the community, this is something that we've been wanting forever. And now, literally, here it is. Here it is. And and it couldn't be the original models because Games Workshop owns those sculpts. Here we are. I'm a little bit surprised that there is so much hate. And negativity on it. And and is that true to say? In the comments, is that true to say? Now, breaking it down and analyzing it, uh, I have this this theory. If you've been following my channel for a while, here's here's like here's kind of like Fritz advice. Big guns never tire. When in doubt, attack. And regardless of winning or losing, if there's a chance to take glory on the table, you go for the glory. That that's kind of like what guides me. On the narrative side, it, it's funny, especially in, in many of the, the hobbyist communities. Playing games is fun, but for many players, what's more fun is to argue about games. And I'm not talking about like Tactica and, and mods and kind of playing games in general. I'm talking about like just like raging against whatever the, the current stance is. And I, I don't know what it is that, that brings that out. I respect the integrity of the opinion. I respect uh, the passion. But at least if you're going to put forth an argument, give me a couple of bullet points. Give me some things to work with where I can be like, yeah, I'm feeling you. I, I, I may not agree, but look, point two, three, and four, I can't argue against that. But there just seems to be this rage with the reprint. And part of me wonders, is it just to rage against something to rage against? Then there's the group of players, which I understand. Hey, the United States of America is, is just a mess on all levels today. That's that's just a given. And and most days you're like, what are we even doing here? But that said, without going down that path, finally something works out where, you know, if you're living in the US, you can actually get this game. And and I understand the the upset from that perspective. Uh those of you living in Australia, I mean, you're used to dealing with games workshop and other things. You guys never get anything down there. Or it's like $20 game shipping $200. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, I get it. You're essentially on a giant continent. But uh, with that, I understand the intricacies that there were multiple hero quests. This is my understanding, right? Three or four different releases of hero quest under different licensing, all held by Games Workshop for the miniatures and the models, but different distributors depending on where you were in the United States, Australia, uh, kind of Canada, UK, and, and maybe like the rest of Europe. So Hasbro only owns the rights, only owns the rights to the U.S. market, and I think shipping to to Canada from that perspective and distribution. So that that I understand that, but that does really stink because if you were passionate about it, now uh, really the best you can do is is try to hook up with 
a friend or an associate in the in the community in the hobby and get them to piggyback you a copy but then they've got to ship it to you and you got this custom stuff and you got shipping I, I can understand the passion of being like you know I really want that that second copy that new copy that refresh that reprint but you know, is it worth it? I, I feel it. You know, if that if that's your argument's point to rage, I got nothing to counter that with. I, I, I feel it. The third reason, which is amazing me the most, I mean, we know the best thing about Hero Quest is Hero Quest. There, there's a lot in the community which seem to be, and again, in the comments, if I'm wrong, it's it's good. You know, I can I can I want to go back and forth. I want to debate this idea that it's not a refresh, it's not an update. It's the same game. Well, isn't that kind of what we wanted? Isn't the immortality of Hero Quest being, yes, it's a simplified system, but there is some elegance in that simplicity. It's just a pull out and play, roll some dice, beer and pretzels, have some fun, dungeon crawler. And because it's so simple, this is, this is kind of the interesting thing. If you have the elegance of simplicity, you can scale it up, you can homebrew it up, you can improve upon it, you can tinker with it. If you have this massive complexity or, or kind of algorithms, say like um, Gloomhaven, you know, I love Gloomy, but if you want to house rule and mess around with Gloomy and add stuff onto it, tinker with it, so there's going to be some homebrew, home rules, uh, it becomes very, very challenging. It becomes very, very difficult to do that because of the complexity and the interlocking of the missions, the cards. Hero Quest being simple allows you to do so much. So I wonder, it's exactly what it is on the box. Would you want, why would we want a refreshed Hero Quest with tweaked rules and changed rules? Or worse, as far as I'm concerned, which would be the real heresy would be Hero Quest re-release. And you look and it's like, okay, it's got the classic characters. It's got the board. It's got kind of the miniatures and the quests. But it's some new rule system, even an, um, a massively updated rule system. Like, we don't need that. That's not Hero Quest. That's called some other type of game that you just slapped Hero Quest on. Um, I, I certainly wouldn't want that. And, and the counter is uh, also from many fans which I wonder how many uh, people commenting this are fans versus those interested. They're like, oh, it's a Hero Quest reprint. Why would I go with that? It's so simple. It's a fail. I just want something more complex or there's 10, 15, 20 other dungeon crawlers out there that have more complexity and are better. Well, yes, but they're not Hero Quest. They are, you know, Dark Souls, Runebound, um, whatever you want to kind of put in there. Gloomhaven, Frosthaven, Jaws, whatever it's going to be. Um, keep Hero Quest, Hero Quest. Keep it for what it is. Keep it pure from that perspective. I mean, that's that's really uh, the aspect. That's really what to push. And in my mind, this is this is perfect. This is everything that we've kind of wanted from Hero Quest for Hero Quest. All right, now I do have to have one gripe because I, I can't come out here in full fanboy mode. And just um, not offer something. Uh, shipping, uh, well, first of all, you know, like you get hit up with like a gazillion taxes. I got like uh, sales tax. I got county tax, New York county tax. I got New York sales tax. I got new uh, special tax. Okay, that's that's just, it's called online business, right? You can't hide that anywhere. So, okay. I just, that's like the, the tax of, of participating. But shipping was like 30 bucks. Shipping was like $30, and uh, I'm assuming a project of this size and given the distribution that Hasbro has, there's going to be like, you know, maybe an East Coast and a West Coast distribution center or or just a, a massive, you know, mid-distribution center. So they're going to minimize shipping charges on, for themselves. I'm going to hope the game is packed like Miniature Market. Miniature Market, anything that I've ever packed, been tight, doesn't matter what it is, a big box, three or four layers of, of bubble wrap. I mean, the thing is like a tank compared to buying something on Amazon, which I don't even do anymore. I'm not even, it's not even a question of knockoffs. It's a question of Amazon is like, here's the board game tossed in an envelope, not even a padded envelope or just a flimsy box, no padding, nothing gets destroyed. It gets stepped on. Uh, the Amazon efficiency in where I live, no joke. Literally, they drive the Amazon truck by you know, because I'm like on a long street and they're chucking the packages out into your driveway like a Frisbee. They're not even, they got to hit their numbers. They got to hit the marks. They drive with the doors open 
and they don't even slow down. I mean, it's crazy. So I, I can't even do that with Amazon because they don't care. But the big thing that I'm wondering is if you're charging 30 bucks for shipping, US, this thing better be packed like a tank. This thing better be ready to go. And just how big is the game going to be? Plus the two expansions. I mean, is it really $30 in shipping? You know, shipping, handling, boxing, wrapping. I mean, that, that seems a little high. Maybe it's not. Um, would $20 be a little bit more reasonable? It, it just seems like a little bit high. That, that's my only kind of minor gripe. So you're, you're automatically going in at the higher tier. Because you want the expansions, you want uh, everything. I don't know if this is going to retail either, right? Is this going to retail? Uh, I can't see that on the site. So this might be a pump and dump, one and done, cast, cash boost going into the holiday season. Notice when it's going to be manufactured. When it's going to be manufactured is when they're going to charge us all. You know, when it goes uh, to print, you know, it's get funded, goes to print. That switch when we all get charged, it's not even ready yet. When that happens, that's November. I think the timing was to pump up the holiday numbers, get a couple at one or two million, maybe 2.5 in fresh cash. Don't pay the 10% Kickstarter fee. You've negotiated with your platform provider. So this way, those credit card fees are going to be as low as possible given the volume and the guarantee. So from that perspective, uh, I'm kind of wondering just people want to back the higher tier because if this doesn't go to retail and... You want to get the stretches, you want to get stretch goals, you want to get the expansions on there, you want the whole in experience, so you're automatically in for the hire, then you add on taxes, then you add on shipping, Um, it's, it's a lot, it is a lot, but now I would counter that and say, look at some of these Kickstarters, some of these Kickstarters, you're like, oh, 99, you know, $99 base game, that's that's okay. You know, that's pretty reasonable. They're going to throw in some stretch goals, throw in some free stuff, ready to go. Uh, but then you know it's going to be Kickstarter exclusives and Kickstarter distribution only, not even retail. So you need the X packs, you need the expansions, you need the season one, you need the season two. You get the customized dice because why the heck not? You're already in for everything else. So 15 bucks for dice. And then you're looking, you're like, I just dropped five, six hundred dollars and shipping on that. So is it really that crazy? But circling back around, um, it's amazed me. I'm amazed by the amount of of rage at Rage. I've only seen this type of rage, uh, honestly, Games Workshop, Warhammer 40K fans raging against GW and and kind of their machinations and how they handle some things. Although they've gotten their act together a lot recently. Your thoughts on the reprint of hero quest and, and kind of what's bringing out this passion or, or maybe just look, we've been waiting for this for what, uh, it was like 95. So like 25 years, I don't know, 28 years. We've been waiting that long. Some of you listening to this, like your entire life, we've been waiting for a hero quest reprint. So it's just this pent up excitement, pent up energy. Of course, the community is going to blow because we're finally getting it. That could be a lot of it also. 